Hey all, Express Unity, and welcome to episode 11 of making a multiplayer survival game. Now, in this episode, we're simply just going to be fixing up a few issues, and we're going to be starting on our uh, animation masks for animations with running, uh, combined with, say, an animation for hitting or shooting. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and let's get into it. So, one of the first mistakes we ended up making when we first started the tutorial series is actually putting our uh, button detection for our jump in our fixed update. And that won't work 100% of the time just because of the rate that fixed update runs. Um, so, you usually don't want to have any kind of uh, uh, input detection inside a fixed update, and you always want to put that stuff inside of just your regular update. So all I'm going to do here is we'll end up creating a new Boolean and then we're going to set that Boolean inside of our update um, using the uh, input dot key down, get key down, and that's going to be our spacebar. Um, and then we're simply going to set that to true if it is down. Um, otherwise, it's going to be false. And then once we are also inside the fixed update function, we are going to run our specific jump code using our new boolean that we make. And then after that, we are going to then set the boolean to false after, we've, uh, after we have run our uh, jump code. So as you can see, our jumping now works as intended. Every time we press spacebar, we do actually jump and there is no more delay or needing to rapidly press spacebar in order for it to detect correctly. However, now we have the issue of being able to infinitely jump. So why don't we get back into the code and fix that up? Alrighty, so now what we want to do is go back into our update function inside of our uh, if statement for detecting our jump. And inside here, we are going to be making a new raycast. And this raycast is going to be responsible for detecting anything underneath us. Um, so if it does end up detecting something, then it will allow us to jump. Otherwise, it's going to uh, basically lock us out and not allow us to set our boolean to true. As you can see, now that we have done that, our jump works correctly. So long as we are on a flat surface or that there is something underneath our feet for that raycast to hit, we can now jump. However, once we jump and there is nothing underneath us, we can't jump again. So this is a very quick and easy way to get some simple uh, one-time jump logic uh, inside your game. So what we're going to do now is create our new late uh, update method. And inside of here, we're going to be getting our uh, main head position, and we are going to set that to a head anchor uh, position, and we're going to create that game object later on. So after we do this, let's create two new public game objects at the top of the script. I am just going to call mine head anchor, and then the other game object is just going to be called head. Now, after we do this, we simply want to set head.transform.position equal to headanchor.transform.position. We are now going to create our new game object inside of our player, and this is going to be called our head anchor. And we're going to position our head anchor around about the center of our uh, current head. After we do that, we are then going to set both our head and head anchor variables by just dragging and dropping our two game objects over them. Next, we're going to be creating a new animation for our player camera. And all this animation uh, is going to do is move forwards 
uh, so that it is kind of moving with the body. Um, as the particular model we're using here, when he runs forwards, his upper half of his body does lean forwards quite a bit. So we are going to just compensate for that by uh, pushing our camera forwards using an animation. All right, so now that we've done that, we're going to go into our camera animator controller and we're going to create a new empty transition and we're going to transition back and forth from the empty to our animation using a new parameter we make. We're going to call this parameter speed and we are going to adjust the speed of that parameter the same way we adjust our running animation. All right, so now we want to go back to our player controller and inside of our fixed update, right where we set our animation for our player, we are going to set our animation for our camera using the same va uh, value of the speed. And we're going to make that uh, set to target val .normalized magnitude. And there we go. Now, instead of seeing the back of our player's head, when we walk forwards or do any other kind of movement, um, it is uh, as normal as we can get it. I'm sure we can tweak it further, but for now, this is fine um, and looks pretty nice. Now, you do need to remember that these changes are not visible over the network. They're simply client side uh, so that we can just make uh, the vision as clear as possible for our player. All right, so all I'm doing here is making a very, very simple punching animation. It doesn't look good. It's not supposed to look good. It's just something for me to use so that I can show you guys how to use the animation mask system, uh, which will allow us to basically run two different animations, one for the bottom half of our player and one for the top half of our player. All right, we are now going to create a new layer for our player animator. And I am simply going to call this layer actions. All right, so now we're going to create two new avatar masks. Now, one of them is going to control our base layer and the other our action layer. Basically, for our actions layer, we're going to set that mask to only be able to control the IK and arms. Um, and then we are going to disable everything else, the body, the legs, the head. Um, however, for our base layer, we're going to leave all of that stuff enabled. Now for the final steps of setting this up, make sure you set the base layer avatar mask to the base mask we created and the actions avatar mask to the action mask we have created. One other thing to note is inside of the action uh, layer settings, make sure that the weight priority is set all the way to one. This basically means that whenever it plays animations for the arms, they will always be prioritized over anything that is playing inside of the base layer. Okay, so next up, we are going to add our player hit uh, animation that we have made inside of our new actions layer. We are then going to create a new empty state, which will act as our uh, idle or our default state for that layer. And we're going to create a new parameter called hit. And this parameter will be triggered every time we press our mouse down. So inside of our code, all we are doing is get mouse button down one. And after this, we're going to anim.set trigger and the string inside is going to be hit, which is the parameter that we have made inside of our animation controller. It's a little bit hard to see here, but uh, if you look carefully, as we run and I click my mouse button, I believe it is the right mouse button. Uh, we are playing two animations at the same time. We are running and we are hitting with our upper body. 
So before we finish off the video, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to Happy Robot for supporting the channel through Patreon. Um, if you guys uh, don't already know, I actually started up a Patreon and if you guys wanted to support me, go over and check out my Patreon now and see all the uh, cool rewards you could potentially get. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the new video format. I had a blast making it. Um, it is something that does take time and with the current workload, I'm honestly not sure if I can make these types of videos consistently, but uh, I will definitely try. Uh, please do remember that I also have a Discord server, so if you guys need any kind of help, go ahead and join that. Myself and a few other members would be more than happy to help you out. Um, and on that note, I'll see you guys in the next video.